This video is designed to help Year 12 accounting students learn how to record commencing entries in the General Journal and in the General Ledger. So what is a commencing entry? A commencing ent entry happens in the General Journal and it's designed to establish double entry records that is completed by entering the existing balances in the General Ledger. So we can use commen commencing entries in a couple of ways. We can uh, use them when the business is first established, so when it's first started, and that's when we might be contributing assets or liabilities from maybe the owner, or when we move from a single entry to a double entry accounting system. So what does that actually mean? Well, a single entry accounting system is something like we used in year 11 or unit one and two accounting, and that's where we record source documents or transactions into journals like our cash payments journal or our cash receipts journal. A double entry accounting system, as the name suggests, means that it's recorded twice. So that means that transactions and source documents are recorded in journals and in ledgers. And that's where we use the general ledger. So a commencing entry is recorded in the general journal by entering assets as a debit entry, liabilities as a credit entry, and the current capital amount as a credit entry. So what this means is that it matches our accounting equation. So if we think about um, what we already know about opening balances, we know that assets will typically have a debit balance, liabilities will have a credit balance, and owner's equity will also have a credit balance. And that helps us understand our accounting equation. So let's look at an example where we are commencing a double entry accounting system for an existing business. And we've taken this example from the uh, Cambridge text that we use to help us understand and follow along. So on the 1st of January, 2025, the owner of Toy Bonanza prepared the following memo to his accountant. Please set up a double entry accounting system for us to use from here on. The firm's assets and liabilities as of today are, and then it gives us a list. So what we would need to do here is we would need to record for our assets, and we can see that these items here, bank, inventory, account receivables, and shop fittings, these are all examples of assets. And we can see that these three items, account payable, loan, and GST clearing, we can see has got a credit balance. They're all of our liabilities. So what we need to do, and I'm just going to record a couple of these to show you, is record these in our general journal. So we would say January 1st, and we would start with bank. So bank, because it's an asset, would have a debit balance of 1,400. We would continue on. So we would have inventory, and we would keep moving down and down and down. So we would have our account payable, we'd have another account payable and shop fittings. And we'd follow that exact same process. We'd then start recording our liabilities. So we'd have GST clearing. And we said this has a $300 credit balance. So I'm gonna put that on the credit side. And I would do the same for the account payable and for the loan from GQC Finance, and they would both have credit balances. Now, both of these don't equal, and we know that debits need to equal credits when we're doing a commencing entry. So we need to calculate our capital, because remember that this is just the assets and the liabilities. The owner's equity has not been included. So whatever the amount is that is the difference is going to be the capital amount. And capital, as owner's equity, would have an opening balance on the credit side as well. So to calculate capital, you need to use the formula assets minus liabilities. So this is what it would look like when it was fully recorded. You can see there that we have all of our assets and I've just put them in blue so they match the the source document for ease of uh, of use so these are all of our assets and you can see that they all have a debit balance these are all of our liabilities and 
This one here is our owner's equity and I've calculated that by using my formula over here on the left. So if this is our general journal, we then need to take that over into our general ledger. Now I've just picked three of the accounts um, just to show you an extract. So in the inventory account, we can see that the inventory had an, a balance of $37,000. So what I would put in here is on January 1st, I would put 37,000. And because I am literally opening the general ledger accounts because I'm moving into that double entry system, this is the first time they're being used. So I'm using an opening balance and that's because um, that's going to be my cross-reference, okay? So inventory would have a debit balance, account payable for Hunter Toys, I can see there is going to have a credit balance of 21,000, once again, using the term balance, and my capital figure on Jan 1st, once again, using that cross-reference of balance, of $25,392. So for commencing entries, they don't have a, a cross-reference to another account, they just have an opening balance or balance as their cross-reference in particular. So this is what you need to be able to record in the general journal and to record into the general ledger for commencing entries.